Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast with Phil Graham. We help you master Facebook ads and give you an unfair advantage over your competition. Are you ready? Let's go. What's up, podcast family? Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast, episode 375. Phil Graham here. It is mid-July, and today we're going to be talking about some reasons why your Facebook ads might be failing even though the ad metrics might be looking good. So the ad data could be good, but you're not getting what you want on the other side of the ads. There's reasons those things can happen and there's things that you can do about it. We're gonna talk about that today because it's really important. I've done many episodes talking about many reasons why ads fail. And a lot of times it is on the ad side, whether it's strategic or ad copy or targeting or bad data evaluation or hundreds of other things. So there's lots of reasons that ads fail on the ad side themselves. However, on top of that, there are plenty of other things that happen after the ad that could cause you to fail. In fact, you could have perfect ads, but still not get what you want if you don't have the right conversion optimization. So I'm gonna talk about some of the things on the other side of the ads today, because we haven't talked about that as much in previous episodes. Things that you should be looking out for and paying attention to and can really affect the performance of your ads. Now, before we jump into that, if you guys are looking to have someone run your ads for you, or if you're actually looking for somebody to teach you one-on-one -on -one how to learn ads and marketing, for either one of those things, just go to my website, philgramdigital.com, or you can DM me on Instagram at philgramdigital, and I'm always happy to connect with you guys. Also, if you ever have any episode topic ideas, send them over, because so much of what I talk about comes from you guys. I've been doing this every week for over seven and a half years. And I love hearing from you and getting ideas. So don't be a stranger, send those over. And I will probably do an episode on it if you send me something. So let's jump in and talk about why ads could fail even if the ad data is looking good. I've got six different things and there's more reasons than this, but this is six of the most common. So number one, you might have the wrong offer. Look, if you are running east looking for a sunset, doesn't matter how fast you can run, you've got a bad strategy. Or if you're trying to sell water in a bar, that's probably not a good strategy either. It'd be a lot better to sell it in the desert if you could. So having the right offer can make a big difference, whether that means what you're specifically offering, the product or service, or sometimes just changing the name of what it's called or the format of what your product or service is in. Like there's a lot of different ways that you can test your offers. Sometimes just changing the name of a product or a course or a service could mean the difference between failing and succeeding. And so these are things you definitely wanna look at. You wanna make sure that it's not your offer that is the reason things are not working. And as well as the offer pricing. Now, pricing is kind of an interesting topic because you don't have to have a low price to succeed. I mean, just ask Apple. They're used to being much more expensive, yet they're one of the richest companies in the world and people love their stuff. So when I talk about pricing, it doesn't mean low prices, but you have to have the right price, whatever that may be. It might be double what you're charging now or less. It depends on, on a lot of situations, but look at your offer. If you've been running the same offer for a long time and it really hasn't worked consistently, it might not be the ads, it might be the offer. So look to change that as a test. All right, the second thing that could lead your ads to fail, even if you have good ad metrics and good numbers, is bad conversion optimization on your landing and or sales pages. So what's your conversion rate? This is really important to know because you could have perfect ads, but if they're going to a bad page and it could be bad for a lot of different reasons, it could be too busy, it could be slow, there could be pop-ups. There, it's a, there's a million reasons why a page could be bad, but you need to know your conversion rate. How many people have visited that page and how many people have converted? And how does that stack up? Are you around three to three and a half percent? Are you way lower? It's important to know that because if the ads are working really well, but the sales are not, it's kind of like you have a boat and you're, the, you're in the middle of the ocean or a lake and there's a hole in the boat. What do you need to do? You need to try and plug that hole. To plug the hole, you need to find the hole and plug it. If the ads are working and doing their job and they're above benchmark and doing everything great, then that's probably not the hole unless you're clickbaiting or doing some weird stuff. Otherwise, 
the hole is probably on the other side of the ads. And so it doesn't mean that you should always change your ads. You might need to change your page, your sales page or landing page or offer, like I said. See what your conversion rate is and then start to look at what you can do to improve that conversion rate. Just like I test ads all the time, you should be testing your conversion rate. Make one change and see how that affects conversions over the course of the next two weeks. Whether that change is simplifying the page, making it load faster, you know, removing a pop-up, adding a pop-up, changing the hook at the beginning, like there's a million things you could do. I would say one of the common mistakes people make with conversion optimization is having too many things for people to do when they hit the page. Just give people one option. What is that one thing you want them to do? And that's it. Make it simple for them. But if you have bad conversion optimization, you could have the best ads in the world, but you could still have challenges. So make sure you check that, measure it, and try and improve it. The third reason why your ads could fail, even if the data looks good on the ad side, is your website is loading slow, especially your sales pages, your landing pages, etc. But your entire website needs to load fast. And not only that, I'm gonna add an extra one in here. It needs to load fast on mobile and it needs to actually look good and be formatted properly on mobile as well. It still surprises me when I look at somebody's site on a phone and I see that it looks horrible. There's buttons that are like taking up half the screen, things aren't formatted properly, but on the computer it looks perfect. Yet 70, 80, 90% of the people are probably gonna be looking at it on a phone. So make sure that your site is formatted perfectly for the phone. That's part of conversion optimization as well. But definitely make sure that it also loads fast everywhere. Phone, computer, tablet. It should load really quickly within a second or two at most. Because if it's loading slow, it's most likely going to be negatively affecting your sales regardless of how good your ads are. All right, number four. This is really common. Another reason why you might fail is no credibility or trust is being built. Or maybe it's just a little bit, but it's not enough. So a lot of people are not going to buy just because of your product or service, but because they trust you, they feel like you're credible, whether that's you personally, depending on how you do things or your brand as a whole. And you've got to build that trust. You've got to build that credibility. That's one of the nice thing about running ads is that it can help you do that. But you also have to do that on the website and on your landing pages and sales pages as well. So make sure you're not sending people to a page that just has what you're offering, but have something like I call a credibility box on there that talks about who you are personally or as a brand, what you stand for, how long you've been doing this, who you guys help, why you love doing it, who to contact if there's a question or a problem, and just do things like that that are genuine that will help build trust and credibility. Because if you don't have that, you could have great ads, but without that trust and credibility, you could be hurting yourself. So you wanna make sure you have that everywhere. Number five, bad branding. Now, when I say branding, I'm not just talking about graphics or your logo, but just like what your brand message is too. Like what is your brand message? Do you have one? For me, for example, I love helping people learn ads the right way. I know there's so many scammers out there that promise get rich quick and screw people over. They are everywhere. I'm the opposite of all that crap. And it's just a completely different way to go about it. And I give value. I don't show fancy cars and all that BS that doesn't matter. Much of the time that stuff is rented and fake anyway, but I believe in giving value and proving it before I even work with somebody. And that's just part of what I stand for. What do you stand for? Depending on what your business is, it could be something completely different, but you should be standing for something and have a good brand. And again, it's not just about the colors or the logo. It's about kind of like your ethical core and who you are as a company. Make sure that you not only have that, but you also communicate that. And most importantly, you demonstrate it because you could say it all you want, but if it's not true, if you don't actually do it, then people will know. It's like this podcast. I've got seven and a half years of doing this podcast every single week. You can go back and listen to all these episodes. This is episode 375. That's a lot. I record these every single week and you can listen and see the value that I give. And that goes a long way. So what could you do as a brand to help with this? It could be blog posts. It could be YouTube videos. It could be videos or posts on, on your website. It, there's like many different things to do that could help you. And even sometimes just a statement on a landing page about what you stand for and why you do what you do could make all the difference and really help build that brand. And then just consistency, whether it's ads or, you know, blogging or whatever it is, but build that up because that can make a difference too. 
And then last but not least, number six, this is a big one. A lot of people could fail because they either have no differentiation or they're not very good at communicating what their differentiation is as it relates to either their competitors and or the product or service that they're offering. This is really important because there's so many places people could go to get whatever it is they want. They need to know why you're different, why you as a brand is different and why your product or service is different. And then secondly, they need to know how that difference can benefit them. And so you got to do a good job of communicating that. And I don't mean like for all this stuff, this doesn't mean just hiding it on some about us page that 1% of the people will click on. I'm talking about having this stuff on your landing pages, your sales pages, your homepage, pages that people are going to be on when they're about ready to make a decision. Don't just put it on about us. I know some of you were thinking about doing that. Don't do it. Put it there too, but put it everywhere else. So my friends, These are all really important factors that could could affect the success of your ads. I highly recommend you guys work on this. It can make a big difference. Episode 375 is in the books. If you guys want to get in touch, philgramdigital.com is the website or DM me on Instagram at philgramdigital. I would love to connect with you and I'll talk to you on next week's episode. Peace out. Thanks for listening to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. Please remember to subscribe and share this with all your friends. For show notes, more tips, and to learn more about Phil, please visit philgramdigital.com slash podcast.